Hey there! Today we're going to talk about how to accept or reject a null hypothesis based on uh, contour intervals on a bar graph. But before we can do that, we have to talk about a couple of different concepts. The first one is going to be this normal distribution curve. And what you see here is an x-axis and a y-axis. And along it, uh, we have, this is the height, um, let's say, of females in the United States. So as we go uh, right on our uh, axis, we are getting taller and taller. And as we go up on our y-axis, this is the number of females. So here, right in the middle, is uh, 5, 6. So this is our mean. Um, and our normal distribution curve is signified by this bell curve that we have right here. So when you see this bell curve, um, this shows us that it's a normal distribution. And at 5, 6, 5, 6 is the mean on this graph, meaning that the greatest number of people, the greatest number of females in the United States are 5, 6. So this is our mean right here, right down the middle. And so this is where our graph or our curve is going to be the highest. Um, and as we get a little bit shorter, we can see that the number of women that are uh, a little bit shorter decreases. And as you get shorter and shorter, the number of women that are that height goes down. So we have very few people that are in the four foot range and we have very few people in the seven foot range. Um, and so this is a normal distribution curve and the numbers go down um, on both sides of the mean. And I want to make a quick note that the mean height for women in the United States is actually 5'4", but for the sake of ease we're going to use 5'6", uh, just for discussion's sake. And so now that we understand this uh, normal distribution curve, let's talk about a standard deviation. That's signified by our sigma right here. And a standard deviation answers the question, how spread out is the data? We're going to come up with a number that indicates how spread out our data is. But to get a concept of that, let's look at two countries and the height of the women in these countries. So the average height of, the, of women in country A and the average height of women in country B. So we can see just by the, uh, by the normal distribution curve and how wide it is that there is a greater spread between our data here. And over here there is less of a spread between our data. So what this is saying is that females in country B tend to be closer in height. And so our standard deviation is therefore going to be uh, greater in country A. It is going to be greater in country A, whereas it's going to be a smaller standard deviation in country B. Um, so there are fewer very tall people, fewer very short people. More people tend to be uh, around the same height. Um, in country B where you have many different heights, lots of different heights in the uh, in all of the different ranges. And so now we understand normal distribution curve and now we understand standard deviation. Let's go to, let me move our page up, let's look at a concept called the 6895 99.7% rule and confidence intervals. So based on the information that was given to me, I calculated the standard deviation and I got one half foot. This isn't true to life, I'm just picking numbers based on ease. But if we were looking at country A, uh, up here, if we were looking at country A, maybe our standard deviation would be, um, I'm sorry, country B, maybe our standard deviation would be one quarter foot. And our standard deviation maybe on country A would be um, one whole foot because the data is more spread out. 
But let's go back to our data here on this curve, which is somewhere in the middle. And so our standard deviation here is going to be one half foot. And now that we know what the standard deviation is, we can determine what the confidence intervals are. Uh, we're going to have our first confidence interval is going to be one standard deviation away from the mean. And so if it's a half of a foot, it is going to be, so if this is five and a half feet, let's go six feet. This is our first standard deviation um, in one direction. And our first standard deviation in the second direction is right here. So this is one half foot uh, larger, and this is one half foot smaller or shorter. And that is one confidence interval away from the mean. And so the 68, 95, 99.7% rule applies here. One confidence interval away from the mean, we can assume 68% of our data, that's sorry, that's a horrible eight, 68% of our data is going to uh, fall within this range of one confidence interval. And so if we were to go uh, a second confidence interval, so we're going to go another half foot, that means that we're going to be one foot away. So here we go, one foot, one foot. So now we're at six and a half, four and a half. We can assume that 95% of our population is going to fall within this whole range here, above and below the uh, mean. And so finally, if we were to go, let me use a different color pen here, uh, to a third confidence interval, another half foot out. So that's going to be one and a half feet. We're at seven feet and four feet. And here we can assume that 99, 99.7% of our uh, heights or our data points are going to fall within this range. Will there ever be an outlier of somebody shorter than four feet or taller than seven? Yes, there's still 0.3% of the population that um, falls out of this category, but there's very few. And so here with confidence, I can say that, uh, oops, with confidence, I can say that 68% of our population is going to fall within of the female population is going to fall within five feet and six feet. I can with confidence say that 95% of our population is going to fall within the range of four and a half feet and six and a half feet. I can with confidence say that 99.7% of our population is going to fall within four feet and seven feet. And so this is the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. All right, now we're going to the last section. Uh, right here where we're looking at the number of shrimp at varying depths in medium light. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let me turn my pen on, is we're going to look for uh, our confidence intervals. I'm going to ask you, is our data statistically significant um, looking at this bar graph? And so within um, a 95, I want to know if this is con um, uh, significant within a 95% confidence interval or two, that's a two, confidence intervals. So within 95% confidence, can we say that our data is statistically significant? So we, so once again, our, our uh, standard deviation is going to be calculated for you, and I'm just going to say that this is um, one shrimp is going to be our standard deviation. And if we want to know uh, within a 95% confidence uh, that our data is statistically significant, well then we're going to need two confidence intervals. So that's one more shrimp, and that equals uh, two shrimp. And so I'm going to, oopsie poopsie, let me go back to, here we go. Uh, let me, I'm going to denote this. Ah, oh, I gotta stop putting my hand there.
and I'm going to denote this with uh, a line that shows two shrimp above and two shrimp below. So if this is uh, six right here, six, this shows us eight, six minus two is four down here. And this looks like it's eight up here. So eight plus two will be 10. And eight minus two is six. This is the same. So 10, six. Up here, this is definitely 15. So this is 17 and 13. And finally, ah, ah, finally, 25 is going to be 27. And 25 is going to be 23. And so by looking at our confidence intervals and where they overlap, I can see that our confidence intervals overlap between 1, 2, and 3. So uh, this right here, six, uh, 6 through 10, is shares numbers between through 8 and 4. And so at this point, I can reject my null hypothesis for the depths of 1, 2, and 3 because the contour intervals overlap. This means that the data is not statistically significant. It can be, it can be probably just left to chance that it doesn't matter which depth it is, the shrimp are going to be uh, within that range anywhere in the tank uh, between one, two, and three. However, as we go deeper, it looks as though that our our data does become significant uh, because our contour intervals do not overlap. So here it looks like it really starts to matter uh, how much light, or yeah, how it really starts to matter. Um, the, the, the light seems to impact where the shrimp are gonna be as we get deeper in the water. And so here I can tell because there's no overlap. 17 doesn't come in between 23 and 27. And so that is how we can determine whether or not we can accept or reject our null hypothesis. And so if we're looking at all of this data, I would have to uh, reject my null hypothesis because it does look as though light, a medium amount of light does play a role at determining where the shrimp are gonna be in the tank um, as compared to a depth of five and a depth of one. Um, all right, I hope that helped and I will see you guys in class. Have a great day.